Hello everyone, today's video is going to be part one of my complete squad guide. Everything from the most newbie noob things to the most high level tactical things, this is pretty much the place and series where I'm going to be discussing all of it. Now for this first episode, I'm going to be talking about very basic UI elements and how to teach yourself squad. I'm not going to be jumping into any online match or getting into any special tips and tricks. This is mainly for people that have never launched squad before. So you'll probably end up learning something even if you are are an existing player but this is going to be pretty much how to get your feet wet with squad so we're at the main page right now this is pretty much the first thing that you see when you launch squad and we're going to be going over the ui right now so on the main page you have owi news which is you know uh, the latest cool thing that OWI is doing. Uh, you have the tabs up here at the top, which are very important. And then you have the first time in squad pre-deployment training. Now, this is an extremely important tutorial. This tutorial does a better job of teaching than I can for some aspects of the game. I highly recommend that if you are brand new to squad, you play this not only once, but maybe even twice, because you will learn so much in that 20 minute tutorial. Um, do everything, read all the tricks and tips, read all the charts. It's incredibly in-depth and is a great tool for learning. Um, at the top here, we have the server browser. This is what you're going to use to find normal games of squad. Now, because there is a Halloween mod event right now, we do have some modded servers showing up in this list for Space Crew and the Squad Zombie mod. But generally, the server browser will show vanilla squad games. That means general uh, RAAS or Invasion or Cora, whatever it is. Um, this is a very plain and easy way to jump into a server you can sort by players the server health which is basically the tick rate or how well the server is performing and then your ping so based off of generally players and ping is how you're going to pick the server Moving on to the custom browser, this is used for mods, private events, private servers, uh, people who want to host their own stuff, um, a lot of wacky, crazy stuff going on in here. You really don't need to be messing around with the custom browser unless you know why you're in there. So don't worry about this if you're brand new to squad. Don't even need to look at it. Moving on to the training server um, or the training area of the main menu you have a couple tutorials and the ranges. Now once again please play the infantry tutorial. This will teach you I'd say about 50% of what you need to learn on squad. The other 50% you either need to just learn by doing and learn by playing or by having other people teach you. It's just, that's how massive this game is. Um, don't worry at all about the pilot tutorial. You can play the pilot tutorial and have fun with it, but do not expect as a new player to be flying a helicopter. You will get yelled at, you'll get screamed at. Don't fly helicopters if you don't know how to play squad because Aside from knowing how the game modes works and how to interact with other squad leaders and put down fobs and do all this important stuff, it's just too much information that you don't really need to know to get a good base experience of squad before moving on. Um, after you've played the infantry tutorial, the next thing I highly recommend is going through the ranges. And I'll show you how to operate the ranges uh, after we go through this main menu settings. Um, but basically, these ranges differ because the factions on them are different. So this one, if you want to try the British stuff and the militia stuff, you pick this one. Uh, the second one is U.S. and Russia. And the third one is U.S. and Insurgent. So if you wanted to you know, mess around with any of the factions, you just pick the respective one and you go in there. Moving on to settings, we're going to quickly go through the settings because this isn't really supposed to be a settings video. Um, we're just going to give you a couple tips and tricks going through here. Uh, number one is increase your free look sensitivity. I highly recommend you do this so you can look around very fast and figure out what's going on around you. Um, moving on past that, uh, this is people ask me what my hold or toggles are. I hold to lean and hold to free look, so that's what's going on there. As far as graphics go, graphics settings, a lot of people always ask me, Karma, where are your squad graphics settings? Honestly, guys, it's going to depend on your rig. I have a very expensive high tier rig, so I'm able to run these settings uh, at 60 plus frames, but you might have a uh, lesser quality rig or, you know, just a weaker rig. You'll have to tweak around with this stuff. Now, just for your information, I do not touch any INI files. I do not set pre-game launch parameters. I don't tweak with anything outside of this. So I don't do anything funky. You might have to do something funky to get a couple extra frames, but I just run on the latest graphics drivers. I just run on a uh, R9 3900X and a 20 ATI, and I just, I just tweak this stuff. I don't deal with anything else. I don't go into any config files or, and mess around with that stuff. Uh, the main things are to play at your main resolution or your native resolution uh, of your monitor to play at full screen because I think you do get a couple FPS at a full screen and then disable super sampling if you are not running on a high tier rig. This will eat your frames. 
don't use this. This is bad. Also, don't fully load textures. Just so, this will increase your load times. Um, that's pretty much the only tips I can give you here. Everything else is going to be very specific to the rig that you're running. Moving on to audio, the only things that I can say here that are really, really, really important are the VoIP controls. Now, VoIP is voice over IP. This is how you're going to communicate with other players. Uh, now you can see how important communication is in squad. For command volume, which is what squad leaders are, are using and what you don't really need to worry about right now, that's set at 200%. That's how important it is for me to hear other squad leaders. I have it cranked to 200%. Now, squad is what you're going to be using, so I have that set at 175, which is a little louder than my local. Even locals bumped up to 150. That's how important it is in squad to hear other players. You're going to have mortars and rockets and grenades and explosions and gunfire and people talking over each other. So it's going to be extremely important that you're able to hear the commands that are being given and to be able to give other people information during these stressful times. Moving on to controls, um, everything is pretty much default. There are like three special things I would recommend. Um, the first one is, of course, infantry. I swap my E and Q keys uh, because it makes leaning easier for me. That's a personal preference thing. I personally believe that it makes uh, leaning much easier and much snappier when you're trying to peek a corner. Uh, it's going to take a minute to learn if you have not ever done that before, but it's ex incredibly useful, and I really, really like this trick. Um, another thing that I did was for my command, if you're a fire team leader or a squad leader, a lot of people ask me how I put down the markers without bringing up the wheel. It's with the middle mouse button. I bind that to my place attack order um, command. And I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in here. There's nothing else too important. Uh, interface, uh, turn on all your tips if you're new to squad because you will need all that information. I've played this game for 3,000 hours. I don't need to see any of that anymore, so I turn it all off. Uh, world tags, this is basically the name tags for players in-game on your team. I have it turned off. I do not recommend this if you're a new player. Turn this up uh, even if you're a new player. This will basically show you who's friendly and what their name is. Very important if you haven't learned the camos yet or if you don't know what the other players are going to look like. Um, and then map marker scale, I'll show you what that is later. And that's pretty much everything here. Then, you have, of course, you have the credits. Now, we're going to be talking about the training ranges because I'm assuming and I'm hoping that you've played the infantry tutorial after this video. So let's go into a range. Let's say we want to try the British and militia weaponry. So we're going to go in there. Now, also thing, a cool thing to note is that when you're loading into maps, you're going to get this screen that shows you all the keybinds in the game, as well as a couple tips and tricks. So even when you're loading into games, and especially if you have a slower computer, boom, you have research and learning material right in front of you. All right. So we are looking at the team selection screen. This is the first screen that's going to pop up when you join a server. It's going to show two teams, the teams that are on the layer, the layer that you're playing on, which is in the center, and then some information about the game mode underneath that. Because we are on a private range, we don't have an actual game mode in the center or any information regarding that. We just have the two teams. So we're just going to continue playing as the British. And we're going to be brought to the deploy screen. Now, this screen is going to show what kits you can take, where you can spawn, the objectives, the main map, um, and all the other squads. For example, down here, I'm going to create a squad. Don't create a squad if you're new to squad. Just join a squad. Don't create. Um, you're going to see a whole bunch of squads list listed on the left. You're going to join one. Now, it's important to note that depending on the name of the squad, for example, if I wanted to name my squad um, Infantry, right? you know what squad you're getting into. You're getting into the infantry squad, you're going to be doing infantry stuff. Sometimes you'll have armor, right? And you'll you'll know that, okay, that's an armor squad. Generally, for new players, you're going to want to be joining infantry squads or very basic squads that are just doing normal grunt stuff, taking flags, shooting people, and doing that. You don't want to worry about flying. You don't want to worry about doing logistics. Don't worry about getting into vehicles. Just focus on learning the basics as a rifleman, which is the default class that you're playing with. Um, so after you pick the squad, you then will end up picking a role. Now, you can go and pick a role here, or you can look at the role loadout. This is also another screen that you can use to pick your role. Uh, at the top here, we have command slash medic, so or specialty roles. So you have the medics. Uh, some roles, when you click them, will give you an option. For example, when you click AR or marksman, you don't have an option of which kit specifically within that role you can take. But if you take rifleman, for example, we have an option of three roles. We have an iron sight rifleman, we have a susat rifleman, and we have an ACOG rifleman. So 
Same thing with the medic. You some some classes just have options. Uh, important to note. Now another important note to think about when you're taking roles is that some roles are restricted. So if we go to the role loadout screen, we will actually be able to see what roles are available to us in game and why. Uh, for example, right now, because we are in the private range, the availability for all these roles is infinite because they want you to be able to go and pick the role. But in squad on a normal layer, you will not have access to some roles if they're already taken in your squad. For example, you're never going to see a squad with nine grenadiers because there's only one grenadier squad squad per squad there's also three fire support roles in a squad that means out of the nine players in your squad only three will be able to pick um one of these roles so the other six are gonna have to pick normal squad roles or command and support roles um that's that's what's going on or i think support specialist roles i'm not really sure i can't remember how specialist roles work but just be aware that availability of these roles is dependent upon how many people are in your squad and what kits they have so that isn't really taught anywhere uh, that's something that is very confusing to some players um and then you will pick your, your your spawn so that's generally what goes on you pick your squad you pick your role and then you pick your spawn there's three kinds of spawns you have main base spawns which are the default main base core spawn that you're going to get for that layer you have fob spawns which are team built spawns for your entire team and you have rally points which are put down by your squad leader and are only used by your squad um so those are the three types of spawns and you'll see them on this right map anything yellow is a spawn point because once again we're on the range we have access to all these spawn points that are yellow once we click on a spawn point we'll click confirm spawn it's very important that you click this button otherwise you're just going to sit in the screen for minutes <laughs> so make sure you click this um you can also select it here or on the map actually so that's everything about this deploy page uh you saw the role loadout page and then you can also see the team slash game mode that was the first page that we spawned into um what else do we have we have a small chat box down here you can use to type blah 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 uh, if you hit tab you'll cycle through the different teams so you'll have broadcast which is only for admins you have all which will type to both teams team which will only type to your team um admin once again only for admins uh, what else? Very important stuff here. There's a lot of information. At the top, you have the lifeblood of squad. This is the core important features of squad or, or core important um, factors of squad, which is time, how much time is left in a match, and tickets, how many tickets are left in a match. The team at the end of the game with the most tickets will win. Certain things will cause the team to lose more tickets or gain tickets, uh, and we'll talk about that later. But for the purposes of this video, because we are in a private range, you have unlimited tickets because they want you to be able to die and spawn back in and look at all this stuff. Um, that's why you have 999,999 tickets. It's, it's a lot of tickets. You're never going to run out of tickets. And then you have unlimited time, so you're not going to run out of time. But basically, th these are the two things you're fighting against, is making sure that you're not losing too many tickets and that you're not um, going to run out of time. Now, we're looking at the other aspects on the UI here, of the UI here. We have the vehicles marker, which will make more sense when we roll onto a no normal layer. We have the icon legend, which will show you what the icons are. If you have no idea what you're looking at on the map, boom, here, you just scroll over right here and you can see what they all mean. After that, you have ticket values. Once, once again, going back to losing and gaining tickets per game mode, per map, it's going to differ, but this will teach you what uh, the ticket loss or gains are for certain aspects of the game per game mode per map um, And then of course we have a couple important toggles here. So this is your map toggles This is how you can customize this big map on your right um, Toggle viewing spawns keep this always on otherwise if you turn it off It's it's gonna look like you have nowhere to spawn. So make sure you keep that on uh, Toggle viewing fob radii for example if I create a squad grab the squad layer kit and I put down a fob marker if I turn this off, I can't see the build radius or the exclusion radius. Now, as a new player, this isn't that important, but as an existing uh, squad leader, what this teaches you is everything in this small inner circle is where you can build next to the fob, and then this outer circle means you cannot put a fob within this, another friendly fob within this zone. So a fob put placed here would be invalid because they're overlapping, whereas if you put it just outside of the circle, it would be valid because both circles are outside of each other. Um, fob 
uh, supply points toggle. I always have this on because if you're spawning into a fob, you kind of want to know how much ammunition is there uh, to see if, if this fob that you're spawning on has ammunition to rearm. So I keep that on. Um, toggle viewing other squad leaders orders. This might be overwhelming as a new player. You can toggle that off and then viewing toggle, um, viewing player roles on the map as player icons. Turn this off. This is information overload. You have 40 people on your team. If you keep this on, you're going to have so many map markers on the map. It's going to drive you nuts. Keep it off. These three toggles, very important. Grid line opacity, you can actually turn it up or down depending on how you like it. Uh, and then flag line, I'll demonstrate in an actual map how that works. You have map scale icons. So boom, they're huge. Or you can get pretty much rid of them. Um, I like running somewhere in 1.5 or 1. Uh, makes, a lot, makes it look good for me. Um, and that's pretty much everything that we have to talk about in this screen. I know it's a lot, but now we're finally going to get into the game. <laughs> All right, so we've selected a kit, and we're going to pick a spawn like I talked about. We're going to hit confirm, and we're going to spawn into the game. Now, we're on the range. On the range, you have access to every gun, every vehicle for that faction that you loaded into. Going back, remember we picked the um, militia and the British. Right? So we have access to all the militia stuff and all the British stuff. Now to access kits, what you're going to have to do is go up to an ammo crate, which are marked on the map by the three bullets, right? This is an ammo crate. This is the British ammo crate. This is the militia ammo crate. Hold F. F is how you interact with a whole bunch of stuff. It's how you get in vehicles and out of vehicles. Um, very important button in squad. And you're going to have access to the ammo crate. Now you can rearm. So let's say I shot, I'm going to mag dump here, it's going to be very loud. You can rearm stuff. Um, so now I'm missing one mag, and let's also throw a grenade to demonstrate. Okay, so now I'm missing two things for my original kit. Now, to rearm one individually, I'll click this, and then rearm one item. But to rearm everything, let's say I was missing more stuff, I would just click resupply all. Now this is important because depending on how much ammo is available, you might only be able to reply some of your resupply some of your kit. Uh, for example, if you're running off of ammo bags, you're not going to be able to rearm your entire kit. That'd be greedy, and you're trying to share the ammo with your lats and with your grenadiers. You might just want to grab like two mags, so it's just important to know how you grab that stuff. Also from the ammo crates, especially on the training range, you're going to have the ability to switch kits to pretty much any kit of that faction so that's an important note is that you can also when you're in the range mess around with all this stuff now on the range um, you have access to all the vehicles and you have access to all the emplacements I'm gonna teach you a couple important things here now that will help you learn how to learn how to play squad now I know that was really weird but this is this video is all about helping you teach yourself because I could go through and teach you every single little bitty thing about every single gun, every single emplacement, but I just want you to be able to experience it, to teach yourself and to get your hands on it and learn how to access the entire part of the game without going online. So we're going to do something um, interesting here, which is click shift P and that will bring you to the admin cam. Now you're only going to have access to this on the private range because you're not an admin on normal servers, unless you are. And I don't know why you're watching this video. If you're an admin, you should already know how to do all this. Uh, but this is basically how you can fly around the map. This is called admin cam. This is how we catch cheaters. This is how we, uh, you know, just make sure everything on the server is going as it should. So looking at this map, we have all the vehicles in the back here. We have a small CQB house on the range. Uh, we have another CQB city. We have helicopters if you want to fly around. Um, all the emplacements, right? So that's pretty much everything on the range. You also have a really important diagram of where to shoot certain vehicles. This is kind of advanced if you're planning on, on playing light anti-tank or heavy anti-tank or uh, engaging vehicles. You can learn the weak spots on enemy vehicles. Um, but this is the admin cam. It's a very important tool, especially when combined with this other tool called admin change map. This will bring up every single map that you have installed. So if you have mods, it's also going to bring up the modded map layers. But if you're new to squad, you won't have half of these maps because you'll only have the base game maps. So if I scroll down here and I use the arrow keys, 
I can actually see all the maps and I'll be able to change to all of these different maps and all these different layers. Uh, it's important to note to bring up this command screen, the button to the left of your one, that's called the tilde key. You're going to click that black bar comes up on the bottom. So tilde key to enter this kind of command area. Uh, you can all, also use this to respawn if you're stuck or glitched. Uh, you can use this for a whole bunch of different things, but the main tool that's so important and so powerful is admin change map. And let's say we'll go to a Basra skirmish v1. It's going to roll the map and bring you to that map. Okay, so we're now on a Basra. We're on a different layer. And guess what? You can actually go through every single map in the game on the offline mode so it's a really great way to learn the maps and to mess around with stuff on layers uh, without actually having to jump into a live server um, so we're gonna spawn just like normal another important command that I'm gonna teach you uh, now we're going to be in the staging phase now this is usually a phase that's used at the beginning of games for teams to kind of organize and for squad leaders to put a plan together because we're alone here we don't really need to worry about this so let's say I want to speed up the map I'm gonna go admin slow-mo five we're now moving at five times normal speed so that will be able to let me move around faster that will speed up the timer so for example i can't leave main right now because we are in the staging area uh, but because i've sped up time i can even go admin slow mode 10 it's going to be even faster and it will let me walk out of main much quicker than waiting the 10 minutes or however many minutes um, before the game will allow you to leave the main spawn so that's admin slow mo so once again we have admin change map lets you change to any map in the game with any layer and you have admin um slow mo we're gonna go admin slow mo back down to one we're gonna go into command or not command but admin cam with shift p and boom look you can now fly around the map and learn the map without actually going on a live server how cool is that right you can access 99 percent of this game without going on an online server okay but now that we're in a server we're going to actually go back and look at a couple of these things now we can see the objectives on the map because the training range doesn't have any of that and we can see what these actually do for example spawn toggle spawn if you have these disabled it's going to look like you can't spawn in anywhere so make sure that you have that on otherwise it's going to look like you can't spawn um you can see what the grid flag line looks like if you have it decreased or increased i recommend having this at max because it will show you what flag you need to go to after you know the respective flag has been captured or lost grid lines you know on or off however you want to use that um yeah that's pretty much all of that now you might be looking here and seeing these red boxes which you didn't see before that's the restriction that i was talking about you need a certain amount of players in your squad to access these kits uh and only a certain amount of these kits can be accessed but if you want to access all of them you do admin all kits available space one and that turns that on boom now you can use anything that's pretty much everything you need to know to get into all the maps to play with all the vehicles to play with all the weapons um in any combination of there therefore so you can play on any map with any weapon and fly around learn the maps and do all that cool stuff so this is basically how you can teach yourself a lot of the information in squad the rest of squad is going to be learned through playing and learning through practice because uh all this stuff you can memorize just from the range you can learn how much uh bullets you have where certain buildings are where the objective is all that cool stuff um, but the rest of this very, very comprehensive guide is going to go through the things that you can't learn on your own and the things that I've learned through trial and error or through, you know, the 3000 hours that I've played. Um, we're going to be going through all the kits, all the vehicles, my tips and tricks for them. Uh, we're going to be going through each map and my thoughts on those maps and how to play those maps. We're going to be going through squad leader information and guides and tutorials and how to squad lead better or my tips and tricks for squad leading, uh, how to roll out with vehicles, a whole bunch of different stuff, how to play certain game modes. It's, it's going to be a huge guide with multiple videos. This is the first one. So like and subscribe if you're interested on learning more squad. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next in this comprehensive guide. Um, next, we're probably going to roll into actual kit uh, loadouts and how to play with each kit and the basic uh, roles of each kit. But you essentially know a lot about squad now and you have the ability to teach yourself more. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have not bought 
squad yet. I don't know why you're watching this video, but if you have not bought squad yet, head over to karmacut.com. You'll support the channel by purchasing your squad copy there. Um, so it's a really cool deal. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope this guide helps you learn how to teach yourself how to play squad because um, that's very important to me. I think that's very important as a teacher is how to enable the people that you're teaching how to teach themselves because, you know, I can only make one video or so so many videos, but if you can actually harness the ability to teach yourself and to find these tools and to use these tools um, to increase your knowledge and ability, all for it, dude, because uh, that will make you a stronger person just all around is learning how to learn. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Leave a comment down below. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and a special thanks to my channel members. If you want to support the channel and get up to 20% off my whole game store, check out that blue join button down below. Speaking of game store, you can buy my favorite games and official merch at karmacut.com, so check it out. Looking for more content to watch? Try our last video here or sub on the right for future uploads. Finally, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.